Okay, take your Bible and go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33. As being in church for a long time, I've been around a lot of different missionaries and different mission fields I've, I've been exposed to as far as watch, uh, talking to missionaries and spending time with them and watching their videos. And um, if, I, if God told me you can go any place in the world you want besides America uh, to be a missionary, I would say the Philippines in, in a heartbeat any day because people are so open to the gospel. And it just, uh, I want to go where the fish are biting and the fish are biting over there. They really are. And it's an exciting place to be. You can tell by the, man, that just excited me watching that video. What a blessing and what a, what a great ministry they all have there. And definitely be praying for them for sure. Um, Ezekiel 33, and then we're going to read verses 30 through 33. Verses 30 through 33 of Ezekiel chapter 33. The Bible says here, Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them is a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. I hope you're paying close attention to that passage because I'm going to ask the question tonight, does this describe you? Does this describe you? Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the word of God. Please help us this evening to listen carefully. Lord, I do pray for the Bangalitas as they are going back home to, to their mission field. I pray, Lord, use them over there, Lord, please. I pray that you keep them safe as they travel the next couple of weeks. Use them here. In the meantime, Lord, give them a great ministry over there. Bless with many souls saved, lives changed through the preaching and soul winning that they're going to do. And I pray for the service tonight. Again, be with the pastor as he's away and his family. Give them a great service tonight. Bless service tonight here for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So does this describe you, the passage we just read? Now, uh, two months ago, we celebrated as a nation our 247th birthday. Usually, the, this, these days that we celebrate will cause America to, number one, be grateful for all the blessings that we have living in a nation like this one, and to be reminded that America is the greatest nation on earth. But number two, it also causes us to reflect on the condition of America and what direction we are headed in. We read in Psalm 33, 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. This, will, this used to describe America many years ago. We cannot say honestly that it describes America in 2023. America, America's God is no longer the Lord. America's God is no longer the God of the Bible. The reason for this is because America as a whole has rejected the word of God. She has done what Psalm 50 verse 17 says. She has taken God's word and cast them behind her back. That's what the huge majority of the people have done. And even though there's a lot of atheism in America, there's still a great deal of religion, but sadly very little commitment to the King James Bible, God's only perfect word in the English language. Ezekiel 33, verses 30 through 33, describes why America has sunk so far down morally and spiritually. It shows the average person's reaction to the Word of God and describes the average unsaved America's, uh, America's, America's reaction to God's Word. It also describes the majority of saved Americans' reaction to the Bible. We're going to look at that tonight. Now, here's the question I'd like to ask you this evening. Does that passage describe how you react to God's Word? As we look at the way these people reacted, please ask yourself, do I react this way when I hear the Word of God? Now, I want to talk about the preaching of the Word of God tonight. Now, I want to talk about the importance of preaching. There are two ways that God reveals His Word. First of all, He reveals it privately in our own personal reading. The Bible talks about studying and show thyself approved unto God. John 14, 26, God, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit will, will guide us and teach us truth. We must read it privately and with an open heart. 
And that's one of the reason, ways God reveals his word to us. Secondly, he reveals it to us publicly. Go to Titus chapter 1, verse 3, and we're going to use our Bibles uh, in the message quite a bit tonight. So be ready to do that. Titus chapter 1 and verse 3. And the Bible says here, uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 3, <clears throat> listen carefully. Titus 1, 3. But hath in due times manifested his word, how? Through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So he pre reveals his word to us pu privately. He reveals his word to us publicly. We must hear preaching every time there is preaching at our church, and we must hear it with an open heart if it is to do the work that God meant it to do. Amen. Now, what are we to hear? Well, the Bible talks about several things that we're supposed to hear when we hear the word of God. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, John the Baptist preached repentance. That means change your mind about salvation. He said pre he preached repentance, and also he preached about Jesus, the Lamb of God. In Matthew 9, 35, Jesus preached the gospel. And, of course, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, talks about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Luke 9, 6, the disciples preached the gospel. In Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, preach the gospel to every creature. In Revelation 14, 6, we see the angels will preach the gospel to every creature on the earth, the Bible says. Now, also, Jesus told his disciples not only to preach uh, repentance and, and talk about him, but also preach uh, and preach the gospel, but also preach the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, we're not going to turn there, Matthew 9, or Luke 9, 60, Acts 28, 31, it talks about preaching the kingdom of God. That's talking about everything about God's kingdom the men of God are supposed to preach about. And if you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the Bible says here in Ephesians 2, 16 and 17, it talks about what Jesus preached. The Bible says that he, hath, he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. So Jesus preached peace. He preached peace true peace. He talked about the peace that is inside of us when we get saved and the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. He preached also what uh, the Bible says he preached peace, but also the Bible says we are to preach what Jesus tells us to preach in Matthew chapter 27. All the words that he tells us about, we are to preach. Everything that God tells us to preach, the preachers are to preach that from the pulpit. Also in Acts chapter 5 and verse 20, Acts chapter 5, and I'm laying the foundation right now for what I, what I really want to say tonight. In Acts chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came to the disciples and said, in Acts chapter 5, verse 20, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. All the words of the Christian life. How to get, how to get, it, how to get the Christian life and also what the Christian life is all about and how to live the Christian life. But we are to preach all of that. 2 Timothy 4, 2, it says, preach the word. That means preach the word from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it talks about. Acts chapter 5, verses 8, uh, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 8, verses 5 and 35, we are to preach Christ. We are to preach his life. We are to preach his death. We are to preach his resurrection. We are to preach his lordship. We are to preach Christ. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. 2 Corinthians 4, 5. Over and over and over again, the Bible talks about preaching and tells preachers what to preach. God calls us watchmen. In Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6, if you'll go there, Isaiah 62 and verse 6, we are called watchmen of the Word of God and watchmen of the people. Isaiah 62, verse 6, the Bible says this, tells the watchmen, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. We're told, called watchmen in Jeremiah 6, 17, Ezekiel 3, 17, Hebrews 13, 17. We are to watch for the souls of people. We are to watch them. What We are watchmen. We are to warn when we see danger. We are to warn of sin. We are to warn of God's judgment. We are to warn of apathy. We are to warn of hell. God's men are supposed to do that. Preachers are told to feed God's people. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. We are told as preachers to feed God's people. 
Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. God speaking to his people said, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. We are to feed the people of God. John 21, 17, Jesus told Peter, Feed my sheep. In Acts chapter 20, if you'll go there, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. <clears throat> this is what Paul the Apostle said to the preachers. He said, take heed, take heed, therefore unto yourselves, into all the flock. Now watch this. Over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. And then he's told, he tells them to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. We are to preach, <clears throat> and remember, we are to preach the whole counsel of God. We are to preach to the people and feed the people of God. We are to remember that the Holy Ghost has made us overseers. I'm so thankful we have a pastor. That's, it's not about him. It's about doing what God tells him to do, preaching what God tells him to preach, because he realizes that the Holy Ghost has made him an overseer of this church. We are to preach what the Bible, what God tells us, we are to feed the people. We are to feed the people so they don't have to fear as they live their life on this earth. Go to Jeremiah 23, verse 4. Jeremiah 23, verse 4, over and over and over again. We are... Jeremiah 23, verse 4. This is what he said to his people. Jeremiah 23, 4. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So we are to feed the people so they don't have any fear anymore about life. And so they won't be dismayed or be in distress anymore about life. So they are not lacking what they need to do God's will for their life. God's preachers are to feed the people, give you what you need. Now, to whom is God's word to be preached? Well, the Bible says in Revelation 14, it is to be preached to the people on the earth. We are told to preach the word and we are told to preach it to the people on earth. We are told to preach to those that are far off. That means far off from God. And we are to preach to those who are near, who are near to God. It is for everybody. Preaching the word of God is for everybody. Unfortunately, everybody wants it, but it's for everybody. Now, how is God's word supposed to be preached? Go to Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. And boy, are we getting away from this today in this, in this day and age. Isaiah 58, verse 1. This is how the Word of God is supposed to be preached according to the Bible. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. That's how a preacher is supposed to preach. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. Show my people what they're doing wrong. That's what God said. Amen. One time I got to, to preach to my mother. Uh, well, she, I didn't preach right at her, but she was in the service where I was preaching. After it was over, I said, well, Mom, what do you think? She said, two things. Son, too loud and too long. That's what she said. And I so I took her to Isaiah 58, verse 1, and said, I'm just doing what the Bible says to do. But anyway, uh, that's how it's supposed to be done. We should enjoy the preacher that we have because that's exactly how he preaches. We're supposed to preach with enthusiasm. We're supposed to preach with urgency. We're supposed to preach with love. We're supposed to preach with compassion. We're supposed to preach with boldness. We're supposed to be specific when we preach. Not generally speaking, but be specific when you preach. Show my people their transgression. That's what God said. 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you go there. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And here's what God said. He said, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's how a preacher is supposed to preach. So preach when you're supposed to preach. Every service ought to have preach. It's preaching time every service. It's not choir time. It's not congregational song time. That's all in there for good to help, to help us worship God. But it's preaching time when the church t comes around. Preach what you're supposed to preach, what the Holy Spirit tells you to say. Preach how you're supposed to preach. Not timidly, not apologetically, but just like God said to preach. That's how you're supposed to preach. 
And the Lord will then work with that kind of preaching. In Mark chapter 16, verse 20, Mark 16, verse 20, the last verse in the book of Mark. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They, did, they preached what God told them to preach. They preached how God told them to preach. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So he will, God will do that. He will work with, the, with this kind of preaching. He will confirm the preacher's words. Now, that, I said all that to say this. Here's the usual reaction. To, to the preaching of God's word. Now, I want to say, preaching is a message from God to people through his appointed messenger. Let me say that again. Preaching is a message from God to people through his appointed messenger. Don't get mad at the preacher and what he's saying. If you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at God. But if you get mad at God, I want to say this to you. How dare you? How dare you get mad at God? But... We are to preach the, the appointed message that God gives to us, his messengers. Now, here's the average unsaved reaction to the preaching of the word of God. Go to verse 30 of Ezekiel 33. And the Bible says, Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee, still are talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Let's go hear what this guy has to say this Sunday. So they talk, the Bible says here, they talk against the messenger. They critique him while they listen to him, and then they criticize him after they leave. That's the typical response of an unsaved person. They, critic, they critique him while they listen. They criticize him after they leave. Now, they'll come to church on occasion. The Bible says in verse 30 that they came, let's go hear what the, what the, what the word of God is going to say to us today. And then verse 31, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. With their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. So they, they will come to church on occasion, the unbelievers will. They come as Christians come. They sit before, before the preachers as Christians do. They hear the words of the preacher, but there is no way, no way they're going to do what the preacher says. They're very nice before and after. They compliment the sermon. I've had it happen to me many times. But their heart is not on what God wants, but rather on what they want. They compliment the sermon. The Bible says in verse 32, Lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one, they would never say that about me, but thou art unto them a very, as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. They enjoyed it, they say. And they enjoyed it because they had no intention on doing what they heard, so it didn't bother them. And they leave completely unchanged. One day, they will realize what they heard was the truth. Verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. I'm talking about the unsaved response to the preaching. They're going to realize one day that what they heard was the truth, but by then, for the unsaved, it'll be too late. It'll be too late. Here's the problem. They came as God's people came. They were false professors, though. They were phony. All talk, but no heart for God and his word. None at all. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. The Bible says here in Isaiah 29 and verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, they have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. That describes the average unsaved person that will come to a preaching service. They were religious, but not Bible Christians. They were stubborn. They were self-righteous. They, they didn't need the preaching. preaching. They had a wicked heart. <clears throat> they, they hear the word, but it doesn't stick with them because they didn't have any intention on doing it. So it didn't stick with them to change them. 
They are indifferent to it. There's no urgency to hear it or do it. They're not saved. <clears throat> they, they hear it, but they won't do it. Now, here's what's really sad. I just described to you how unsaved people react to it, but this also describes most professed born-again believers. Same way. Same way. Many say they are saved. Many people who say they are saved, of course, are not saved. The Bible says that in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. <clears throat> but, um, and one of the ways you know you're saved, Matthew 7, 21, 23, says that it talks about the will of God. If, you, if, you have no, if a burning desire to do God's will in your heart, if it's there, that's a good Bible test to see if you're saved. Because if you have a burning desire in your heart to do the will of God, that means the Holy Spirit's in there. Because he brought that with him when you got saved. If you have absolutely zero desire to do the will of God, not one little ounce of desire whatsoever, that's a good indication the Spirit of God's not there. And that's trouble. But... <clears throat> The average Christian fits so close with the unbeliever in response to what they hear at a good church on the average Sunday. I mean, <clears throat> just look at, at uh, this passage again. All right? <clears throat> they talk against the messenger. I mentioned that. The unsaved talk against the messenger. They critique him while they listen, and they criticize him after they leave. How many times has... The preacher been had for lunch on a Sunday afternoon after church, and he wasn't there physically, but they were eating him for lunch. They were How many times has he criticized on the way home on a Sunday night uh, when the parents criticize what the preacher says? I mean, I mean, the average Christian, if the man of God steps on their toes, they're not happy about it, and they're going to let somebody know about it. And it's usually the people in their car in the car going home. That's the way it is. Now, they'll come to church on occasion, and a lot of times they'll, they'll come pretty faithful. They come, as they come as a Christian, they sit before the preacher, they hear the words of the preacher, but there's no way, there's no way they're going to do them. No way, no matter what. <clears throat> they are nice before the service. Hey, pastor, it's good to see you. And after the service, they even compliment the sermon. That was good, pastor. But their heart is not on what God wants, but rather on what they want. You see, they'll, they'll compliment the sermon. They'll say it. They'll say they enjoyed it. And the reason they say they enjoyed it, I wonder that, how can you say you enjoy it when you, I never see you ever change? It never changes you. In fact, in fact, sometimes you're guilty of doing the very thing the preacher preached about. You heard it. Why, they, why? How can they say they enjoy it? They seem sincere when they say it. Well, the reason they do is because they have no intention on doing what they heard, so it doesn't bother them at all. So they enjoyed it because the preacher had, a, uh, he, he was under them as a lovely song, as one that has a pleasant voice. Boy, I like the way he preaches. I like his enthusiasm. He's not boring. Now, I'm not going to do anything he says, but he's not boring at all. And so they, they can actually say they enjoyed I enjoyed what you, the way you said it, but I have no intention of doing it. Boy, what, think, think about what a pastor would get if he could read minds after church. And here's the sad thing, too. One day they'll realize what they heard was the truth. What, hopefully it won't be too late. Hopefully they will uh, get it before they leave. They'll get a hold of it before they leave. Now, what's the problem? Why do people do that? Why do they sit here and say, and here's words, but they will not do them? I mean, there is, there's still a lot of good preaching left in America. There really is. And, but there isn't a whole lot of changing going on in America amongst Christians. I mean, I've sat here, and, and I've sat up there, and I've watched as, the, as Pastor Broad has pours his soul out, and I've seen him in the middle of pouring his soul out, somebody gets up and leaves the service. I often wondered, do you realize what's going on in this room? God's man is preaching God's word. God is speaking to our church, and you get up and leave? How can you do that? 
But that's the average. Now, now, people don't do that physically. Very rarely does that happen, but it does happen. But there's a lot that do it in their heart. Now, I'm not talking to anybody specifically here because I don't know your hearts. And God, only God knows your heart. And you know your heart. But we need to check ourselves. We need to make sure we're not like these people here that sit in church and just listen to the preaching because it happens to be church time and we like our church, and so we come here, but we have no intention of doing what the pastor says. We're just, he's a, he sounds like a person with a lovely voice and, pre, and singing a lovely song, but we are not going to do what he says. Now, why does that happen? Well, it could be that some that are listening are false, per, false possessors. In other words, they don't really possess salvation. They don't. Uh, I don't know about you, I think, I think most of us could testify for, to this, after we got saved, we were changed. We were changed. And one of the changes that, that God made in our heart was a hunger for the word of God. And I'll tell you what, I wanted preaching. Now, I'm used to going to a church 23 years of my life where the guy got up in a dress and he talked, he talked like, you know, like a guy in a dress. And that's all it was, you know. And I didn't get no excitement, no urgency, no nothing. And so when I, after I got saved, started reading the Bible and started seeing what was in there, man, I wanted preaching. I want God to have God's man preach to me. I need preaching. Get this garbage out of my life. Don't suggest I change. Tell me what I, what I got to change. Tell me how to change. I need preaching. That's what we got to have. See, and <clears throat> when you got saved, there was a desire for preaching. It's one of the things that God brought with him when he moved inside your body. But why does that? Maybe, there's, maybe they're false possessors. Maybe they don't really have salvation. Or maybe they're just stubborn. Maybe they're just stubborn. I, I'm not, I won't change. I won't change. I won't. You know, I hear the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Maybe we can't, but God can. God can. Maybe that it's self-righteousness. I don't need to change. You know, you act like a surrendered Christian, but really you're not. I don't really need to change. Maybe it's, they just have a wicked heart full of self and sin. And they just don't want to give up the sin. Or maybe it's, they're just indifferent. There's no urgency to hear God's word or do it. No urgency whatsoever. I mean, we, of course, we need to understand, and, and it's not too hard to realize this, we are in desperate straits in America. Amen. We can't play games anymore Amen. as Christians. We got to get into this. We got to decide, hey, you know what? This is right. This is truth. This is r the right way to live. This is the way our Father wants us to live. So we better do it. and Quit messing around and just get busy living the Christian life like we're supposed to and being a, a, a bright, shining light in this dark world. Can't mess around. Don't have time for that. Now, so I ask you tonight, what I read in Ezekiel 33, does it describe you? Does it describe you? Or go to 2 Chronicles 34. Maybe this does. I hope this does. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 34. Let me read this to you. <clears throat> I hope this is, this is the passage that describes you. I don't ever want to be placed in Ezekiel 33, those last four verses. I don't want to be a part of that at all. I don't want that. I don't want to be guilty of that at all. I want this to be me. You see, uh, 2 Chronicles 34. And the Bible says here, And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphat the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphat. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they gathered, and they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath given me a book. <clears throat> and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes. Boy, wouldn't that be amazing if when the preacher got up and preached that, that somebody stood up in the middle of the sermon and just rent his clothes because he was so convicted about what his, the way his life was? And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam the son of Shaphan and Abdon the son of Micah and Shaphan the scribe and Isaiah, a servant of the king's 
saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. They were afraid because of what God was going to do because they did not listen and do all that was written in this book. Wow. That's amazing. And the king proceeded here to tell the people what they were going to do, how they were going to change all that. They were going to start doing what the Bible says, doing what God's word says. That's what I want to be noted for. I want to be someone who says, I'll sit there and I'll listen to it and I'm going to do what God's telling me to do. Every believer needs to have that attitude. You need to check yourself tonight. We all need to check ourselves and say, what describes us? Someone who says, well, uh, it sure was a nice sermon, but I have no intention in doing it. Or, preacher, give me the word of God. Change, you, let God use you this morning and tonight to change my life. I need this. Now, if you're described by Ezekiel 33, what you need to do is repent. I don't want to be this way. And I won't be this way. I will not be indifferent when the man of God preaches. I won't. You need to repent and pray for help. Pray for help. Psalm 85, 6, the, the psalmist said, revive us, God, revive us. I'm paraphrasing it. Revive us. You need to get hungry for God's word by yielding to the Holy Spirit of God. We yield to his control. And if you're yielded to his control, you'll have a hunger and desire for the word of God and for the preaching of the word of God. All over this book, God tells the men of God to preach and to preach whatever God tells them to preach. And all over the word of God, <clears throat> we see people responding to it. I mean, it's am some amazing responses. But there's also the response of casting God's word behind their back. They did that. There's also the, the, the response of, hey, I, yeah, smiling and saying, nice sermon, pastor but I have no intention of doing what you told me. How do you come to church on Sunday? How do you sit underneath the preaching of God's word as a hungry Christian who wants to hear it and wants to change? Or as someone who is just coming because you like it here, because you, you like Pastor Broadus and you like the way he preaches, you like his enthusiasm, you like his urgency, you like his, his the way, maybe his humor. <clears throat> Why do you come? Why do you come? I hope it's not like the people in Ezekiel 33 came to church. I hope it's like the people in 2 Chronicles when they got around the Word of God and their reaction to the Word of God. This book is God's book. Amen? This book is supposed to change us. This book is supposed to burn inside of our heart and do something to us when we listen to it. And we ought to have our hearts open and ready to make the changes that God wants us to make. So I want to ask you tonight, of course, we talked about the unbeliever's reaction. Hopefully you're not an unbeliever. If you're, if you're not, an unbeliever, when I, by an unbeliever, I mean someone who's not saved. Maybe you're here tonight, you're not saved. You need to take care of that tonight. Don't mess around with that. Do you realize, all, all of us that are saved, we know. We got saved from hell. That's what we got saved from. And you need to get saved from hell if you've never been saved from hell. Jesus loves you and he died to save you from that. And he'll save you if you ask him to. We're going to have an invitation here in just a second. All you have to do is just get up. Walk down here and tell one of the altar workers, I want to know for sure I'm going to heaven. Somebody will take the Bible and show you how. You've seen that happen several times in this auditorium since the beginning of this year. Well, maybe it needs to happen to you. Take care of that tonight. God loves you. God wants you in heaven. Secondly, how do you come into the presence of the word of God? How do you approach the presence of the word of God? I mean, it's not just, see, here's the thing, folks. It's not just Pastor Broadus getting up here on Sunday morning after the special or Sunday night or Wednesday night and walking up here, it's not just, it's the, the, the spotlight's not on Pastor Broadus. The spotlight is on this. That's why the platform is raised. That's why he preaches from a pulpit of wood to lift this book up. That's what it's all about. So how do you come when you come to the Word of God on Sundays, when you come to the Word of God on Wednesdays? How do you approach the Word of God? Are you indifferent? Are you indifferent or are you ready to change? Let's be ready to change. You see what God's doing in Bible Baptist? It's amazing. It's amazing. Why don't you become a part of that? 
and let God do a great work in your heart so he can do a great work through you as we go, as we try to reach this community. All right, let's pray. Every hum, and bow every eye closed. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for the preaching. Lord, we talked a lot about preaching tonight. We're so grateful for preaching. I'm so grateful we, we come to a church where the preacher believes in preaching. We don't have uh, musicals. We don't have plays in place of preaching. We have preaching. We don't cancel services for holidays. We have preaching when we're supposed to have preaching. And the emphasis is not on the music, it's, and the, but we have great music here. We have wonderful music here. But the emphasis is on the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, help us to realize what an awesome privilege, is, privilege it is to sit under the preaching of God's Word and help us decide this, more, this evening that we are going to approach it with urgency. We're going, to, we're going to sit with urgency. We're going to sit with a hunger and a desire for God's word to change us. And we know we have a spirit-filled pastor, so we know if we come ready to be changed by the Holy Spirit, that that's exactly what will happen. Lord, help us not to be like the people in Ezekiel 33. Help us to run from that attitude, but to be the kind of people that love the word of God, want to hear the word of God, want to be changed by the word of God. Have your way in this invitation. Now, heads bowed, eyes closed. How many have said tonight, Pastor, I know for sure I'm going to heaven. I could take you to the spot I was at when I got saved. I know without a doubt the moment I leave this earth, I'll be in heaven because Jesus died to save me and I asked him to be my savior. If that's you, just raise your hand. I'm saved and I know it. I'm saved and I know it. You may lower your hands. How many say tonight, Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand honestly because I'm not sure. I'm just not 100% sure. I'd like to be 100% sure, but I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. But if I could see how to do that, I'd be glad to do that tonight. If that's you, just raise your hand. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to be sure. I really would like to be, children, anybody, any children like that? Teenagers, adults, if you're not sure you're saved, now's the time to admit it. No one's going to laugh at you. Everybody's going to be excited that you made that decision. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Now here's the invitation. If you're not sure you're saved, you leave your seat when, this, when the piano begins to play. We're going to stand. You leave your seat, walk up here to one of the men, or one, if you're a lady, walk up to Miss Jennifer here at the altar, and you just say, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. We'll have somebody take the Bible privately and show you how to go to heaven. If you are saved, the next thing you need to do is get baptized. If you've not been baptized since you've been saved, you can do that tonight. And when the piano begins to play, you just leave your seat, walk up front here, tell one of the workers you'd like to get baptized. We'll be glad to do that for you tonight. Uh, if you've been bap saved, baptized, you're not a member of the church, you'd like to join the church, you come up and tell one of the men or, or Miss Jennifer that you'd like to join the church. We'll help you do that. But if God spoke to you from the message and you, want to be, you don't want to have an indifferent attitude toward the word of God, you want to walk in here with anticipation that God's going to do something in your life, that God's going to change you. Every time you come in here and hear the preaching, you want to have that kind of an attitude. You come up and talk to God about that at this altar. All right, let's all stand. You obey the Holy Spirit as she begins to play. If you're not sure you're saved, you come up and take the, uh, we'll take, uh, tell somebody up here, we'll take the Bible, show you how to get saved. If you want to get baptized, you come up and tell us that you would like to get baptized. <laughs> we'll be glad to do that. Why don't you have to ask her yet? What is your reaction to the Word of God? How do you react to it? What's your attitude when you come? What's your attitude when you're sitting there? What's your attitude when you leave? Does Ezekiel describe you? Do you anticipate God using his word to change your life when you come to church? We don't need talkers in the pulpit. We don't need lecturers. We need preachers. That's what we need. We need preachers. And thank the Lord we have one here. Let's 
So finish this verse off and, and then the invitation will be over. Thank you so much. Now, let's be a blessing to our pastor. Uh, one of the ways we can be a blessing to him is be in our place on Sunday. Usually when the pastor's away, the members play. Uh, for some reason, some people think they can take off when the pastor's gone, but let's be in our place. Let's be faithful, and let's be faithful at, at giving the gospel to people, inviting people to church. God's doing some great work, so let's let God use us this weekend, and, uh, and let's have some good reports for him when he gets back. And then when you leave tonight, the ushers have a prayer bulletin to give you. Make sure you get one before you leave. It's very important that you pray. It's very important you spend time in prayer, praying for our church, our, our pastor. Uh, everybody in this church ought to be praying for our pastor. Everybody in this church ought to be praying for each other. So let's make sure we're doing that. And take a, a prayer bulletin. We'll help you to do that too. All right? Let's go ahead and close in prayer. And we'll be dismissed. Brother Marcus, would you come and close in prayer? Uh, thank you for that. Encouraging message that Brother Richter uh, preached on preaching, Lord. I know I needed that in my life personally as a um, as a preacher myself, Lord. And I'm just thankful that uh, it was a great reminder also, Lord. Just uh, thankful for the past people being saved this past weekend, Lord. Now we just pray that uh, everyone comes back on Sunday in their place of service, Lord. Just uh, uh, pray for the uh, preachers that will be preaching on Sunday, Lord. Just use them in a mighty way and just have us to, uh, have a great week serving you. We love you, Lord. We thank you. All these things in your name we pray. Amen.